Hi everyone, my name is Andy and welcome to All the Lonely Meeples. On this channel, I share solo playthroughs of various board games, including tutorials on how to play. As always, if you like this video, hit that subscribe button down below. Since this channel is dedicated to solo playthroughs, I thought it was time to share my top 50 favorite board game solo modes. Most of the games on this list have built-in solo modes, while a few others have fan-created ones that can be found on BoardGameGeek.com. With that, let's jump right into my favorites, numbers 50 through 41. Coming in at number 50 is La Grania No Siesta, The Dice Game, a 1-4 player roll and write game designed by Andreas Odendahl and published in 2016 by Stronghold Games. In La Grania No Siesta, you are trying to build the best farm you can while competing against the neutral player in the solo version. And so during the game, you're going to be rolling dice and assigning yourself dice while assigning the neutral player um, their dice. And depending on what you give the neutral player, they will be moving up the siesta track, which is one of the two timers in the game. And it's a, it's a really good balance between giving the neutral player what they need to stop them from moving, while also collecting the resources that you need to, to do local deliveries and make your um, overseas shipments um, and, and uh, preparing your helpers and collecting roofs. And uh, it's, it's just, it's a fantastic game. And I will say as um, a side note, every time I play this game, try not to let the neutral player ahead of you on the siesta track, because it is very difficult, in my opinion, to, to get back ahead of them. Coming in at number 49 is the Castles of Burgundy, the dice game. A one to five player roll and write game designed by Stefan Feld and Christophe Toussaint and published in 2017 by Aaliyah and Ravensburger. Now I love Castles of Burgundy, the dice game. Well, all of them, but specifically the dice game because of the, the way they include the powers uh, when you complete your sets of uh, specific domains, whether that be the churches or the, the cities um, or the rivers. It's just, it's a nice combination uh, through three rounds. Um, I enjoy the time dice uh, in the normal game and in the solo game, you just play, I believe it's 18 rounds, or I'm sorry, eight rounds per, uh, eight sections per round, and then you're done after three. I like how the, the board itself allows you to score your points and keep track of those. Um, it's very, very simple, streamlined, and that's why it's number 49. Coming in at number 48 is King Domino Duel, a two-player roll and write game designed by Bruno Cathala and Ludovic Moblanc and published in 2019 by Blue Orange Games. As I mentioned in my playthrough of this, King Domino Duel can be played solo and it was a solo version was created um, by a user on BoardGameGeek.com and a link for that will be below in this video. But I love King Domino Duel, one, because of the way the you interact with the dice and you just simply take a pair of dice and you mark those on your boards I believe there are five or six shields, different types of coat of arms, and you're trying to score as many points as you can um, with the type, the number of uh, coat of arms times the number of X's that are on the dice, and those X's are dignitaries. And with the solo game, you're also choosing for yourself, and then uh, similar to La Grania, No Siesta, you are giving the extra dice to your opponent. Uh, I believe in this game it's Bruno, and so uh, you just got to be careful not to give Bruno too many good dice as you're as you're working your way through the game because I've uh, I know firsthand there are times where he ends up with you know sixty or seventy points in in a couple you know, specific coat of arms because I decided to take the best that I could um, the best dice for me every single round. Coming in at number forty seven is Metro X, the Rail and Write game, a one to six player roll and write game designed by Hisashi Hayashi and published in twenty eighteen by Game Right. I love this game because of its simplicity. Simply put, you are flipping cards and you are marking X's on train routes. I believe it's A through I, so there's several train routes and they all they all crisscross through each other from start to finish. And the brilliant part of this game is that as you're as you're crossing off X's you are not allowed to skip over X's um, that might have uh, crossed each other in different paths, unless you have one of those skip cards that allows you to do that. And so you're constantly trying to figure out how to best um, place your X's on the train routes and to score the most points and complete the most uh, train stops. I believe the train stops are what the circles are and you're, so you're crossing them off. And um, each train car only has two or three uh, spaces where you can put numbers. And 
it's just it's a it's a good thinking game and that's why it's number 47. Number 46 is the Whatnot Cabinet, a one to four player set collection and tile placement game designed by Eduardo Buroff, Steve Finn, and Beth Sobel, and published in 2021 by Pencil First Games. So in the Whatnot Cabinet, uh, you are collecting curiosities and putting them in your cabinet, called a Whatnot Cabinet. And by doing so, you're going to be collect or drafting tiles and placing them on your board wherever you want. And there are uh, several ways to score. One is uh, either horizontally or vertically. The two, two main ways is making all the same object and then all the same color. And then you've got some objectives that you're trying to complete uh, before other players. Now in the solo game, you will be competing against your rival in a very similar fashion, but the rival's gonna have uh, their own deck of cards that, that manipulates the board uh, and the, the drafting row most of the time, making it harder for you to make selections. Coming in at number 45 is Majesty for the Realm, a two to four player tile placement game designed by Marc Andre and published in 2017 by Z-Man Games. Now in Majesty for the Realm, this is an open drafting game where you are taking uh, different types of people and putting them in your kingdom. And in the kingdom we have a, you know, you have a brewery, you have a barracks, um, all sorts of things, an infirmary. And these people are going to be, be um, stacking underneath each of the places they go. And every time you do that, each place has uh, different ways to score. So perhaps my brewery will give me points for each of my brewers, plus points for if I have other people in other sections of my board. Now in the solo game, you are going to be playing against the a young suitor. And they are going to have their own deck of cards. Since this is a four player game, there are four whole sets of, of place cards. And so you're gonna take two sets of those, mix them up, there's an A side and a B side, and then that's gonna be their deck. And depending on what the number at the bottom is, whether it's 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B, um, all the way through, those are the cards that you're gonna take from the row, and that's what your young suitor drafts. And then at the end of the game, they're gonna score points based on what they have, and then you're gonna score the same exact way. I think it's pretty balanced, and it's an easy way to get a one-player game uh, out of this uh, two to four player game. And these rules that I'll be using in an upcoming video are from a, a, a creator from BoardGameGeek.com. Coming in at number 44 is actually my all time favorite tile placement game with multiple players, and that is Carcassonne, a two to five player tile placement game designed by Klaus Jürgen Reed and published in 2000 by Hans in Glück. Now in Carcassonne is a tile placement game. You're gonna be drafting tiles from a bag and placing them on the board. It'll be a shared board with all players. And you're trying to place your meeples, they're like little wooden people, uh, onto a feature on the tile that you place. Those features are roads, cities, monasteries, farms, and then if you have expansions, there are other features that you could be, that you could use your meeple for. And once you, once you finish or complete one of those features, you're gonna take your meeple back and score points. And so I really love this game because it is a, it's a great balance between cooperation and competition with the other players. Now in the solo version, uh, and I have a solo variant here that I found on uh, boardgamegeek.com, somebody had created it. And what you're doing is, it's really a test. You're gonna have uh, so many meeples uh, with three different, out of three different colors, and you're gonna split the tiles amongst uh, each of the, the three hands that you're gonna be playing. And you only score points if the person you're scoring for is, is uh, last in score or tied for last. And so it's a really interesting uh, you know, thinking game, strategy game, and I'm trying to score the highest score possible, but I have to bring the stragglers up um, throughout the game. And so that it, it presents a different challenge and it's, it's a different feel than the original Carcassonne game multiplayer. Coming in at number 43 is Tiny Epic Dinosaurs, a one to four player worker placement game designed by Scott Alms and published in 2020 by Gambling Games. In Tiny Epic Dinosaurs, you are, you are collecting and creating spaces for different types of dinosaurs. And there are instances where your dinosaurs um, can breed, giving you more and giving you more points. Um, you're trying to complete objectives throughout the game and possibly um, 
you'll be hit with penalties and um, fences will go down and dinosaurs will escape. And it's a, it's a really interesting game, worker placement game, and I, I find it kind of difficult solo version. Coming in, number 42, is Dopelt So Clever, a one to four player roll and write game designed by Wolfgang Varsch and published in 2019 by Schmidt Spiele. So Dopelt So Clever is actually the, the second game in the So So Clever series. The first one is Gun So Clever, and it might appear higher on my list uh, in, in the days following. But in Dopelt, you, in all these So Clever games, you are taking different colored dice and you are rolling them and selecting one of your dice to use that number on your board. And your board, uh, depending on the game you play, but they all have different colored sections on your sheet. And the interesting thing about this game is when I take a die from the ones I've rolled, any number that is less than that, that number that I took, they go away. So you're encouraged to take lower numbers so that you have more dice to roll in the three rounds that you have, or the three rolls you have each round. Um, I love this game because it plays, it plays pretty similarly to uh, single player as it does multiple players. And um, this one is, I find it a little tougher than the other ones, and that's why it's a little lower on my list, but still in my top 50. And finally for this, this group in my top 50, coming at number 41 is Project L, a one to four player tile placement game designed by Michael Mikes, Jan Sukal, and Adam Spinell, and published in 2020 by Board Cubator. So in Project L, you are placing tiles, and these tiles are uh, different shapes, and the boards themselves are these, these uh, miniature boards with um, specific multi-square shapes that you're trying to fill. And once you fill those shapes, you score those points, and you can grab more. The cool thing about this game is that you, are, you can upgrade your pieces. So you have so many different actions that you can take during the game, and I can take new pieces, maybe my, my, my one squares or my twos, um, but I can also sp spend action points to, to upgrade my pieces. And every time I complete my little boards of shapes, I will get some type of reward. And most, most of the time, I think all the time, those are extra pieces. And so you're encouraged to, to complete pieces or complete those boards as fast as possible, giving yourself more pieces to work with each round. Thank you for joining me in a look at my first 10 games on my top 50 favorite solo board games. Since the first four games on this list have already been featured on, my, on this channel, I'm, the next playthrough video is actually going to be the Whatnot Cabinet. I look forward to seeing you at that video as well. Thank you.